power under Newtonian synthesis. As with any lecture in this course, the story of energy could take up an entire course all, all by itself. Um, it is difficult and it's deep, and、uh, we try to have a sense of、uh, what the ideas are.、Um, in, in the last class, we are talking about energy and the、uh, conservation of the energy. And、uh, I really need to spend a little bit more time talking about energy today. I want to add some more details, and in particular, I want to think about what happens as energy flows. I want to talk about the rate of change of the energy of the system.、Hmm. As we've seen in many times, the rate at which something changes in a Is, is an important story, and、uh, I also would like to take some time today to try to put together everything we've been talking about so far. And、um, I, I would, I'd like to understand what we've said, and、uh, what the big picture is, and、uh, the, the where we could head with this core idea of the classical physics. The first, let's go back to the, the energy story. When you have a, a system, it has a certain amount of energy in it, and you can transfer the energy to another system. I'd like to ask about how rapidly that happens.、Mm. The difference between the energy being transferred slowly and energy being transferred quickly can be a tremendous, pra a practical tremendous practical difference. If you think about the healthy biological cell, it's transferring energy at some particular rate. If, you, if the energy transfer is too slow, you have a dead cell. If the energy transfer is too fast, you have an unhealthy or sick cell. So, the, so um, uh, if the energy transfer is too fast, you have an unhealthy or sick cell. So,、uh, the rate at which energy flows can matter. And uh, we, want, uh, we once talked about the、uh, Volkswagen van and the sports car trying to drive onto the highway, right? Yeah. And they both started at rest, they both ended up at、uh, 60 miles an hour, which means that、uh, the change in the kinetic energy of the both of the, the vehicle was exactly the same. They started at zero and they ended at the same number, assuming that they are roughly equal in mass. It was not a change in the every,、uh, it was not change in energy that was different. It was a rate of a change of, a, of energy that was so different. So, it was a rate of change of the energy that was so different. The sports car, car、uh, the, the, the sports car entered, got into the highway after three seconds, and the VW microbars took a full minutes. The, the same. The, the same energy flow or transfer,、um, there, there is going to be something different about the same energy flow or, or transfer happening over a much, much longer time. And I'd like to give the, the something a name. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, so let me repeat it again. There is going to be a something different about the same energy flow or transfer happening over a much, much longer time, and I'd like to give that something a name.、Uh. The rate at which energy flow is called power. Power is defined as to be the amount of energy transfers,、uh, the, the amount of energy transfer divided by amount of time taken. So that's what I mean by the rate of the flow of energy. And,、uh, it's a, and the power, power it's, it's very easy to mix up power with energy, just as it's always easy to mix up, mix up a thing and the rate of the change of the, that thing. So, so it's easy to, to mix up the things and the, and the rate of the change of the, that thing. We've talked about the many times. Yeah. We've, so, we, we, we've thought about the position of the, 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 the particle, and the, we've asked how rapidly the position changes over time.、Mm. Over time, yeah. Which is,、uh, which is your velocity? 
the position, it, it is a position and velocity. They are related, but very different things. It is the same with the velocity and acceleration. Acceleration is the rate at which your velocity is changed. Force is the rate at which momentum is changing. Again, force is the rate at which momentum is changing. And now, power is a rate at which energy is flowing. Let, let, me, let me give you a concrete example so that we can appreciate how you might care about one or the other, how they are related to each other. Let's think about, uh, let's, let's think about instead of the energy, let's think about the, the water, in, water in bucket. The amount of water would be a quantity that you could measure. It's well defined and uh, you might care about the amount of water in the budget. You might care where it's, it's full, half full or empty. Now, now imagine there is a hole in the bottom of the bu bucket, bucket and there is, there, there is a rate of a change of the moment, uh, amount of the water in the bucket. So, so it could be um. So there, there is a rate of the change of the amount of water in the bucket. It could be a uh, high or it could be low, depending on the size of the hole in the bottom of the bucket, right? Yes. And uh, and you might care about flow rate. You might you might care about flow rate. For for instance, if you put it, um um and. Um, uh, if you are using this to put out a fire, then what you really care about the moment is uh, how rapidly, how rapidly the water is flowing out the bottom of the bucket. If you know the flow rate, you know nothing about how much mo how much water there is in the bucket. If if I take a snapshot in the time, I say, wow, there is a one gallon per minute flowing out of the bucket. You have no way of knowing whether the bucket is still mostly full or uh, and it just started to pour out or whether it's nearly empty and uh, it's almost done pouring out. Mm. There is no way you can tell from the flow rate alone at one, at one instant in the time how much stuff you have uh, and vice versa. So if you just look at the bucket and you take a snapshot and you say, "Oh, look, it's a half flow." Well, is it flow? It's is it flow flowing flowing out rapidly or is it flowing out slowly? You have no way of knowing if you just take that a quick look. Yeah, look, it could be, it 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 could be. So it could be that it's flowing out very rapidly and it was just a few amount of ago. Uh, or, or it could be that uh, it's been taking forever for it to leak out. So when we are thinking about the energy and the power, we want to distinguish between how much energy something takes and uh, the rate. Let's think about the example. I climb up the staircase to my office. It's certain number of floors and uh, I have a certain mass. And uh, does that change in my gravitational potential energy depends on my mass, depends on my mass and uh, how, how high I go. So if I walk from the ground floor up to my office, it requires a, a certain amount of energy. Now, um, it might take a little bit more energy in a practical sense because I m might waste some convert converting it into the heat in, in, my, in my kneecap and so on. But uh, la roughly speaking, uh, the, the amount of energy required would be a fixed number. But, uh, roughly speaking, the amount of energy required would be a fixed number. Now, recognize that uh, uh, it is that a certain number of joules, whether I run up the, the stairs, walk up the stairs, or walk up one floor and then sit and wait and uh, then walk up another floor. Mm. Right, right, right. So, it's the same total amount of energy required. What's the difference is the power required. Power is energy divided by time taken. So if you go up that same distance, and uh, one day you go up very very quickly, that means very small amount of time you divided by very small time. You, you, you have a very large power requirement. So it takes uh, a lot of power to run up the stairs. But uh, but it doesn't. 
but it doesn't take so much power to walk slowly up the stairs. Oh, 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 oh. But、uh, it takes the same total amount of energy. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, of course, if you know the, if you know the rate of something and you know how, and, and, and you know how much time you've taken, then you can pull the whole story together. If you know how rapidly you are transferring energy and you know how many seconds you have been doing that, then you can figure out the total amount of energy that was required or that was transferred. We measure the power just like any other physical quantity and, and,、uh, quantity, yeah. And it's going to be energy divided by time, yeah.、Uh, that would be a joules per second. Hmm. Hmm. Joules measures energy and joules per second is power. And、uh, I'm not sure if, if it is good, good things or bad things, but、uh, many physicists have a tendency when they have a frequency used,、uh, used conceptual idea such as a power to give, a, to give the unit its own name. The unit of power is called、uh, watt.、Mm. One watt of power is one joule. Flowing every second. It's named after James Watt, who was the inventor or one of the inventor of steam engines back in the 1700s. James Watt was thinking about the steam engines and he realized that、uh, what, you what you really care about、um, is the,、uh, how rapidly can you transfer the energy when you transfer the, from the core, when you transfer from the core、uh, or, or the, or the e a t Wood into the train. You'd like to take it up to,、uh, you'd like to take it up to the, the top of the hill quickly and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, so it was the、uh, power that he was especially interested in. Okay, let me, let me, let me repeat it again. So it's named after J- James Watt, who was the inventor or one of the inventors of the A、uh, steam engine back in the 1700s. James Watt was thinking about steam engines and he realized that、uh, what you really care about is how rapidly energy can be transferred. How rapidly energy can be transferred from the coal or the, from wood into the train. Wow. You'd like to take it up to the top of the hero quickly, so it was the power that he was especially interested in. Ooh, wow. One watt is one joule every second. Now remember, joule is a kind of small human scale of energy. One joule is the amount of energy it takes to lift a small apple by a couple of feet. It's very reasonable and little amount of energy. So one joule per second would be a relatively a small, a relatively small human scale of power.、Mm. So, if you have a 100 watt light bulb, which means it's consuming 100 joules every second, second after second, the light bulb is converting electric, electric energy into the heat and light energy. And、uh, it's doing so at a rate of 100 joules of energy one,、uh, every, every second. Wow. Uh, in the end, what do you pay for? What do you pay for? You, do, you, do you pay for energy or do you, you pay for the power? Well, well I, I would argue that what, what you pay for is energy. That's, so if you have an electric company and they call themselves the power company, they really should change their name. They are really an electric company because that's, because that's what you care about in the end. It takes a, a certain amount of the coal, coal, coal every month that you are personally responsible for, or oil, or whatever the original source of energy is.、Mm. Now, suppose in your house you got a ha- suppose in your house you've got a 100 watt light bulb and a, and a 20, watt, 20 watt light bulb, and you can now buy these compact fluorescent, fluorescent bulbs that are rated at 20 watts, and、uh, yet, yet they are just as bright as a 100 watt bulb. So,、um, how can that be? How can that be?、Uh, well, 
The answer is quite simple. The 100 watt conventional bulb is putting out, putting out most of its energy in the form of the heat, which, 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 which you don't care about and you don't notice. Uh, it's just waste energy. Oh. It's still a uh, wa uh, it's a waste of energy. It's still coming up from the electric company, but but you yeah, you are not caring about it. The 20 watt bulb is uh, simply more efficient in the case. It's just uh, as a bright. There is uh, just uh, much light coming out of it, and uh, but but it's a more efficient conversion of the energy that came in the energy in the form of that you want it. So. L l let's think about now. Let's think about the numbers. You have a 100 watt bulb and you've got a 20 watt bulb, and that means that uh, the the first bulb you you that first bulb is uh, is consuming 100 joules every second, and um, and um, uh, so there is a couple of ways of think about it. You could think uh, for for fixed amount of time, so one hour, 100 watt bulb has consumed. Five times as much energy as the 20 part, 20 watt bulb because because 100 is five times more power than 20. It's five times as many joule every second. Um, yes. So uh, if 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 they if they both run for the same number of seconds, then high power bulb is going to use more energy. Another way of looking at it would be to look at different amounts of time. So you, you could say, I, I could run my 100 watt bar for one hour, or 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 I could run my 20 watt bar for five years, and again, that would be the same total energy required from the electric company. 100 watts for one hour is the same total energy as 20 watts run five times longer, or five hours. So again, you can start to think about it, the energy efficiency, and uh, and uh, it's easy to mix up energy and power, and uh, and uh, I encourage you to work out these numbers just enough to just enough so that you recognize the difference between the two quantities. It will be very useful for you when you are thinking about making your house more energy efficient. Ha ha ha. That's right, that's right, that's right. Uh, just in terms of the energy scale, so you, you could you, you have a sense for how big it, how big is big. A sports car speeding up to the highway speed with a gas gas pedal down all the way, uh, really accelerating hard, is is probably consuming on the order of a hundred thousand joules every second. Wow. Let me repeat it again. In terms of the energy scale, so you have a sense for how big is big. A sports car speeding up to the highway speed with a gas pedal down all the way, really accelerating hard, is probably consuming on the order of the 100,000 joules every second. Mm. So 100,000, one joules of the stored gasoline potential chemical energy is being transferred into the kinetic energy of motion every second. That's enormous. 100,000 joules is a lot more than the human scale, and that's happening every second in your automobile. In America, we tend to use the old system and with the power, we would talk about, we would talk about horsepower. It's obvious in our, our archaic unit, one horsepower is roughly the amount of energy that a typical horse could transfer every second. So, uh, one horsepower is uh, still a power, and uh, it's, it's quite a lot of power because horses are very pretty powerful animals. Now, it, it, it's, it, it's a cur curious thing to think about it. How long can a horse put out a horse power, worth of power? So how, so how long can a horse put out a horse powers, powers worth of power? Um, 
it's not forever. Those or the horse will grow tired. It will grow hungry. It will need to eat and consume some energy so that it can put out more energy every second. I don't know. It depends on the horse, but uh, it's maybe、um, an hour or maybe half day, half of a day. Horsepower is just an artificial human definition at the point. A 150 horsepower engine, a powerful automobile engine, would be about 100,000 watts. These are just different units. It's like a meter and inches, and I'm going to prefer to stick with the, the watt because I I have a better intuition about them. And it it is nice though to be able to convert from one to the other. There are many, many units for energy and pow for power. And if somebody talks about energy in terms of barrels of oil or calories, you just have to go look up how many joules a calorie is, or how many joules are in the barrel of oil. It's just a number, and then you are all set to convert back to your system that you are understanding.、Um, gasoline has an enormous, spectacular storage capacity for it. Yeah. Capacity for、uh, is it energy or power? So, so, so gasoline has an enormous spectacular storage capacity for is it is it energy or power? It's energy. Gasoline stores energy. You can use that energy quickly or slowly. You can run it in a high power engine or a、uh, low power engine. But the gasoline has energy in it. In one gasoline, in one gallon, there might be a There might be or at、uh, one one million joules. One million joules. Remember that an、uh, automobile was using one hundred thousand every second, right? So you could run your car for thousand second, which is the、uh, in minutes, roughly 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 fifteen minutes on the on the gasoline of the. Uh, uh, on the gallon of the gasoline now, I'm not worrying about question of, of efficiency and the、uh, how much how much gasoline energy is going to in, going into the kinetic energy and how much might be going into heat or other places. These are just some rough numbers.、Mm -hmm. So. Gasoline stores an enormous amount of energy, and when you start it, start thinking about issues about energy in the environment, and when you ask, when you start to ask a question about conservation of energy, you recognize that all you need is to think about energy and the and the the, the rate at which energy is being transferred. That's really all there is to that story. Beyond that, it's really just a question of the arithmetic and making sure you have a unit, you you have your units straight.、Mm. Um, I would argue that、uh, this is perhaps one of the most important issues in terms of your personal life and the pos possibly the life of the our nation of all our, our, of all of the particular physics topics that we are talking about in this course, energy issue. Uh, energy issue are the clearly absolutely essential for us to all understand.、Hmm. You need to decide if you should buy a compact floor compact fluorescent bulbs. What what difference does it make? It turns out it it turns out、uh, it makes a very big difference and would would be able to run our society off of windmills. Well, you would need to know a few simple facts.、Hmm. How much? How much power does a windmill generate? How many joules per second does it put out? How does that compare with the energy per second that a coal plant can put out? How many windmills would you need? Do they do they run all then do they run all of their time? What happens if you are running high power windmill for a very short short amount of time and the the, the wind the wind stops? You have to think about the total energy, and it's really not that hard in the end. Of, in the end, because energy is just power times time. <laughs> because the energy is just the power times time. Yeah, 
power is just energy divided by time because th there are two ways of thinking about the connection between energy and power. As a physicist, I use the phrase conservation of the energy of all of the time, and what, what I mean is total energy is preserved from the beginning of the some interaction to the end of the interactions. If you're looking at the entire system, you can shift energy around, but there is a definite amount that you're shifting around. To a, to a energy environment, environmentalist, energy conservation means something a little bit different. Energy conservation in that practical sense refers to how efficiently you are taking certain number of the jewels in your fossil fuel and uh, converting it into the, the form of the energy that you are interested in. So if you want to move a, a vehicle, how much of the stored chemical potential energy can turn into the kinetic energy? And um, mm, and, uh, and uh, how much do you waste in the forms of that you don't care about usually? Thermal. Mm. Well, when you think about energy, it is uh, it uh, stores in many different ways: uh, chemical energy, gravitational energy, and kinetic energy. And uh, when you have a particular situation that you are interested in, you ask, "How much do we have to start with? Uh, and how much, how much is how much is be is being conserved into the form we are interested in?" Uh, that's what the energy conservation in the everyday human sense means. It's, it's clearly connected to, but slightly different from the energy conservation as a phys physics principle. Yep.